There we go. Here we go. There we go. Jumping we are the finally here. in. So as we said, four bands, Alistar and Olaf were the people we have to keep in mind. They yep. were banned. TSM banned. Yep. Alistar. Alistar. Uh, being Curse. Super strong jungler right now. Gank heavy jungler. He can really snowball the game for you and it's just going to take over. Um, he's also a fantastic support. Um, he's pretty common ban in most um, high yellow games right at the moment. Um, Olaf, again, might just not be someone that I want to deal with, but his top lane is absolutely deadly. I know from Dyrus, um, he's doing... He's crazy good Olaf. If you watch him at IPL, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. he is amazing on Olaf. So that's no surprise that he got banned. He just pushes people out of lane all day. That's yeah, all I mean, actually, We're actually noticing here, uh, CRSU banning Vladimir, another one of Dyrus' champions. I know uh, Reggie played him a little bit too, but he's more so like a Dyrus champion. Mm -hmm. um, it's right up his alley. Yeah, Dyrus was really good again at IPL, just dominating with Vlad. So I think they're kind of taking that away from Dyrus. Banning him with top lane is a pretty common thing to see in competitive play because... Um, there was that one stat that got brought up that said when they get ganked, 80% of the top lane, um, they win those games. When you get gank heavy top, it's like 80%, something crazy high like that. Really? So if you camp top lane in competitive play, like 80% of the time, if that top lane gets fed, they win. So banning out top lane is pretty pretty uh, common thing to do. Well, it's all about top lane is usually the uh, a big bruiser that snowballs mm -hmm. pretty hard. You know, mm -hmm. the Aurelias, the Jaxes, stuff like that. Yeah. So giving them that first blood or even just a kill. Just, yeah. just roll. It, it so you really want to ban out those champions that can snowball hard. Exactly. Vladimir's one of them. Exactly. Vladimir's a champion that he can go 0 and 9 and still rack up 400 CS and yep. roll your enemy team with Hemoplague. It's a 12% damage boost to your entire team. Mm -hmm. Sure, check that right off the list. The other bands coming out: Doctor Mundo and Jax from Curse U. While TSM is taking off Janna, Urgot, and Shin from the table. All the first pick up there. All common bands. Oh yeah, nothing, nothing super special here. The Olaf was very targeted, of course. Alistar, yep. kind of uh, normal as well. Yep. So nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. These are all pretty. Standard bands are being very popular, uh, same with Janna and EU. Um, so those are pretty solid bands by TSM. Um, makes sense. Uh, we are seeing a Nocturne pickup, which is absolutely loved by European players. Nocturne is like, like he's loved by bread all. and butter, right uh, there. Yeah. Like, oh, absolutely love that stuff. Like Nocturne's like. Mm, mm, mm. Like you got Nocturne, like guaranteed they were all like high fiving around the room, like yeah, we I'm got sure Nocturne. they were. Like, like that's how good Nocturne is perceived in in Europe right now, and and in North America he's also considered a very strong pick. Um, he just fits European playstyle so well. Um, so I'm curious to what, see what the TSM is going to pick up here, and they are going to go with the heavy spam lane where uh, Graves is just going to be able to push and spam the clear the waves with his buckshot. Um, Soraka can just give him that extra boost of survivability, and and really it's just a farm lane. Um, but you can actually get some kills if if Graves is able to punish them and land those buckshots. He can really get in there with a good um, to get good dash forward. He can burst people down. He does have that ignite. Um, so that is quite a strong uh, bottom lane combo. Potentially ignite. I mean, Dyer's is probably going to be switching that out for someone. That's actually true. That's actually true. But I mean, I have definitely seen Graves start running ignite more and yeah. more often. You know, there was a kind of shift whenever heal was buffed and stuff, where a lot of AD carries were taking heal on themselves because they weren't always the closest people to their support, so they could just, mm -hmm. you know, take care of themselves, and that was the important thing: them yep. living rather than the support. Exactly. Uh, so you know, we may see him take ignite again. That's going to be traded down to Chaos whenever all the picks come in. The second two picks from uh, Curse U is going to be Ash and Tarek. How do you feel about? that lane um that's actually it's uh if you notice what they're going for that's a kill at six lane absolutely kill at six like generally um well bottom lane the Tarek's going to be definitely zoning from the bush um he's just going to be standing there you know adding pressure all that kind of stuff ash is going to try to be there to cs ash isn't really you know such an offensive lane she's more like ash is like a team fighting lane like mm -hmm. you pick like if you pick like an ash channel lane that's like a lane that you're probably going to lose but you're just waiting much. for the team fight you're, yeah you're waiting for a team fight it's, it's a very team fight oriented thing uh, but when you throw a Tark in there that gives you the the power to zone and also gives you power to gank so heavy at six because think about a nocturne coming in like like nocturne initiate or or, or uh jan or rather uh, ash initiate mm -hmm. with the arrow Oh my god, like, yeah. Tarek falls up and stuff. You got Paranoia, you got, that's you it. got Dazzle, you got you everything die. you, you just, That's too much CC that early. It, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a cleanse taken on Chaos for that lane, because that is just so much CC um, that there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. There's just not, If you get hit by one of the CCs, you're going to die in competitive play. No one's going to let you live through that. Exactly, exactly. And that, that's the difference right there between solo queue and this tournament play. So hopefully hopefully Saint has uh, brushed off some of the rust, because I know he has played AP before, you know, mm -hmm. and he's, he's a fairly good player. We're going to see how he fares against Reggie's Morgana today, mm -hmm. which is going to be a whole lot of fun. Uh, odd one, bring back his Maokai. I know he was very strong. I believe was it MLG... Uh, one of the MLGs where he really, really brought out yeah, Maokai yeah, really, really did. strong. It became the flavor of the jumper. month. So uh, we'll see how Odd One, how the Maokai Morgana snare combo will do in mid. Do you think that's going to be pretty much dead at four whenever uh, Maokai comes out of the jungle? It, it definitely, it's a possibility. Depending on how how uh, Saint plays it and 
where he wants to be and what he wants to do. Um, I know Karthus is a counterpick to Morgana because Morgana can't really do much. Um, they're going to push against each other, and it's really just a farm off lane. But the thing is, Karthus really isn't in trouble until the Maokai comes in, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where we're going to see that. Um, but the, the thing about the Morgana Maokai gank is that one, once one of their stuns lands, the yeah. other one's guaranteed to land. Yeah. You know, and Maokai is a hard stun. It's click, you click them, and you're there. You know, yeah. so once that lands, the Dark Binding is sure to follow up. So exactly. that's going to be really, really scary for for Saint. You know, and Saint being, uh, a, a, I don't know, maybe just a rough around the edges, edges AP mid player, especially compared well, to someone like Reggie. But yeah, he is. Um, he used to actually play a lot of AP though. Before he came, became a competitive jungler, when he was just a Soki player, he actually mained AP carries. Okay. He was his only only jungler was Warwick. Now, does he have does he have a a deep champion pool? Would you say as far as APs are concerned? Or? Um, I he, I think he's got a deep enough pool that he can play it successfully. Okay. I think I think we're not gonna see. Um, you know, anything crazy good outstanding, but we're definitely going to see top-level play. He's going to make the moves he needs to make, and I'm, I'm sure he's going to pull it together because he's a fantastic player. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, I was t actually talking to Baludo and Saint the other day about their kind of jungle synergy and how they were going to accommodate for not having Extinct, you know, because Maluno and Extinct just know each other so well that they mm -hmm. can play so well together. Ha throwing Saint Vicious in the mix is a little scary, but what Maluno was saying is that he doesn't have to babysit Extinct whatsoever. Extinct wins whatever lane he's put in, yeah. you know? Indeed. So this is going to be uh, a little bit different than what they're used to because Maluno may have to protect Saint just a little That's bit more. True. He may have to spend a little bit more time mid lane than he's used to, and therefore Young Buck up top lane, who's a phenomenal top lane player, may be left high and dry. So we're going to see if, uh, if the a skill and experience of Young Buck can allow him to destroy any top lane that he wants yeah. uh, without a lot of help from the jungler because I don't think he's going to get uh, oh. a ton. Mm -hmm. We haven't actually talked about top lane yet, but that is going to be a Kennen on Dyrus versus Young Buck on Riven. And generally, uh, Kennen's going to win that lane, but definitely not absolutely stomp the Riven. Okay. Riven, if, if, if they get some managed to get some good ganks off top, I mean, Riven's, as we talked about, one of those snowballing top lane champions. That's going to be rough, to say the least, for Kennen. Um, yeah. Riven just she gets, gets the AD. She gets a Hex Drinker. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You can't do anything at that point, no, right? No, especially because Maul Malamortis have, has been oh. like a common build on Riven. Oh, yeah. And she just skyrockets as she gets low, which is, you know, the point of the item itself. So it's going to be pretty uh, pretty fun. We're going to go to a quick 30-second commercial before we get into this game. Hopefully we won't miss anything. We'll be right back in just one moment. All right, we are into this game right after that ad. Looks like we've got some uh, standard things, just boots all around. I mean, that's you don't really you don't really stray from that at all. And it looks like uh, Soraka and the support Tarek mm -hmm. picked up pretty much the same thing. Uh, yeah, the fairy actually, charm wards. I'm actually kind of like well, it's actually it's actually personal preference. I prefer to have the boots on Tarek for the initiation on the stun. I think that's fantastic, a level one to have, and that's just you know again my personal play style. We are seeing both wards going out there by race though. Um, they know they had it there. Um, CRS not knowing that that's warded, so they saw him there. They are having this little confrontation over here though. Gonna oh almost not landing my binding, just barely misses. We're gonna see possibly initiation here. Seems like CRS is being very aggressive here. Team is gonna have to back up. There's a volley going out, just nicking Kennen there. And that actually seems like they're still going to be going in. TSM might want to sit there. The sapling is going to notice them, though, so they might actually have to back off here. They might actually turn around, though. We do see Slepper coming back in. And actually, no, we're actually going to go back. Yeah, and I, I mean, I would say, uh, for my money, Absolute Legends definitely had the, the better team one, mm -hmm. uh, our, our level one team fight right there. Uh, they knew that Maokai had actually taken his, his Sapperling and not his Twisted Advance. Yep. So, you know, there was no CC from him. There may have been a little bit of CC from the Dark Binding, of course. Yep. But, I mean, between the Dazzle, you know, uh, Riven actually didn't pick up a skill there, but she did end up picking up uh, yeah. Valor. If she had gotten a Key Burst, that would have been two stuns, the Fear, you know, it, it, it would have been really Wally good. and Crit is terribly exactly strong good damage like I can't emphasize how strong ash is level one like by far one of the strongest level one champions and if you have an ash with combo with another cc you, you automatically have a strong level one yes indeed and it looks like uh 
Uh, Nocturne is going to start with his red buff, so maybe we'll see an, uh, an early-ish gank from him. Odd One is going to start cleaning up his blue buff. He does pick it up right there, going to transition over to the race. He did start at Wolves down bot. It looks like uh, we're going to have the, the Graves Tarek, or the Graves Soraka, Ash Tarek. Who do you think has, has a big advantage down there? I mean, you said they're both fairly passive lanes, you know, except for the uh, level 6 thing, where uh, mm -hmm. you think Tarek and Ash are going to really take over. But yeah. before level 6, you think Buckshot's going to win out? It's, it's a very strong possibility because, I mean, all he has to do is sit there and tank it. I mean, is, as long as he's the one taking damage and not the Soraka, if, if Chaos is the one taking damage, then he can just spam W on him all day, give him all the mana he wants, then he can just, you know, push where he wants, pull when he wants, and just really control the lane. Um, and if they have wards out, which they do, they can control the Tarak, and he won't be able to zone as well. Um, generally, what you should do in this situation as a Tarak is pick up a pink ward um, and place it down. That's when you can zone that brush really good, but I don't think... Does he have one on him? Um, no, he just has greens, so until he gets a pink ward, he really won't be able to, to zone like the way... Tarok really needs to to control the bottom lane. So I'd actually have to give this pre six. Here's a gank up top from Maokai. The Twisted Advance does land on a Riven. He gets the uh, the smash knock up. One more Mark of the Storm would no. No CC there. A nice Valor away will get him out of the way of that last Thundering Shuriken. That probably would have locked him down and been a first blood. Mm -hmm, definitely. Great play by Young Buck, but Maokai Coming looks like uh, Odd One's going to come in again. Oh, unfortunately. Gonna go overextend there. That is gonna the twist advance is gonna land on them. Are they gonna be able to get enough damage in the ignite is going out, and that is the first blood going to Dyrus on TSM. Yes, indeed. That did I feel like I'm a little bit behind you. I'm not quite sure how that works out, but <laughs> we'll see. Unless you're just you're clairvoyant and you're actually just predicting the future just by a few seconds. But I, I, uh, I might be. <laughs> as far as mid is concerned, it looks like Karthus has racked up 17 CS to Morgana's 22. So, you know, Morgana has the tormented soil. She's able to farm waves a little bit harder. It looks like she's kind of just pushing Saint to his tower. And, uh, and, and he's just trying to last hit with lay waste at this point, and that's not the most effective thing you can do, especially compared to tormented soil. Yeah, it's it's again, it's really a farm off until um, Sink gets some mana going where you can really just spam. Cause, cause when you throw down the tormented soil, it's really just like it clears by itself. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, the mana cost versus the the Q cost for for Karthus and the lay waste is really you know Morgana's in favor of that. So she will be able to push a little bit harder. But until um, yeah, he's, he's able to get some items, it's going to be in Morgana's favor. Now I love how uh, uh, Dyrus decides to go back with his first blood money and pick up two Doran's blades and a ward. So, you know, it's something common we see regardless of the, if they're going to build AP Cannon as, as far as the late game is concerned. They like to get those Doran's Blades to kind of use his floaty long-range auto attacks mm -hmm. to put out as much damage well, as possible. Well, it also lane. works with his W. Oh, does it really? It does. It does. It the does the passive. The passive. It does a uh, percentage okay. amount of damage, I believe. I think it's around 40, I believe. So That's an actually impressive amount. So every time you W, um, or, or rather the, the passive proc on the auto attack, it does uh, quite a bit of extra damage. That's why you're seeing these cannons take these Dorns. Uh, we've got a little action going on here bottom, just go some trades back and forth. Nothing too serious. Got two healers in the lane. Got two guys that give armor. I mean, not much is going to happen down here until we see uh, one of the junglers show up as we're talking about that Nocturne at level 6. Now, is the priority skill on Tarek, is it imbue or is it the, the Dazzle stun? Uh, no, you, Dazzle is definitely a 1.1 point wonder. Uh, you don't need anything like that. You're going to be maxing uh, your Shatter and your Imbue. Um, I tend to max Imbue. The heal, the pocket heals are just really good. Um, unless you're going for, like, you really want to burst someone down. Um, that's the only way you're going to see it. Uh, we are seeing on very top, top, though. Young, Young Buck, Buck taking, taking a, a lot, lot of damage. damage. He's going to flash. He's going to make it away. But that is actually not going to get it. The, the pot's going to make him live, and he's actually going to be able to get out of that. The last Shuriken did not land, and he was able to get away. That was uh that was an impressive play by Young Buck. That that potion, he is glad he had that in his yeah. back pocket. And that, he he procked it at the exact right time. That is why you have potions, ladies and gentlemen, because that that man lived with like ten HP. 10 that HP. was one hit. And Saint Vicious getting here initiated on. There's a Morgana all going out. Saint Vicious will drop down. Reginald picking up that kill middle. And oh, it, the Carthasalt is going out. I do not believe that's going to get the kill. No, that's just going to be barely not enough. Oh. Just escaping the double kill from Saint Vicious. And that is unfortunate. Both players left about 145 oh, out. In the meantime, bot lane, looks like they're going for a tower dive. Ash does get exhausted. Looks like they're going to pull back there. Maluno is oh, sitting around in this brush. That is oh, but a nice ward by Soraka will spot him there. So he is going to back off there. Yeah, that was a really great timing ward. That could have been definitely a uh, big time trouble for Chaos right there. 
Most definitely. But uh, both of them farming rather effectively. Ash, 51 CS, to Kaox's 44 CS. So uh, he's using the Buckshot, I think, mainly for harass. He does quick draw in and force a flash out of Slepper. So Slepper is, is going to be without a flash for the next few minutes. That's something I'm sure that the Soraka Graves and even the Maokai is going to take advantage of. He's going to come down there in the next few minutes and get a nice, nice gank off. Uh, in the meantime, Dyer looks like he's going to check out the red buff. But he was spotted by a Curse EU ward. Looks like he's just going to ward it up. Uh, potentially kind of try to posture up for a, for a steal in the next mm -hmm, few minutes mm -hmm. whenever it comes back up, I believe, at the... Uh, well, I guess oh, Nocturne uh, did start at his red buff. Yeah. So well, it's going to be a little while before it's up. A, a big thing about that, though, is a lot of teams, a lot of teams are just, like... And so, you know, you know how all these always just have this, like, perception of Dragon being the only thing you fight over? Now, blue buff is, like, the biggest thing. Denying your AP carry middle is, like way better. Teams are grouping up for blue buffs, they're stealing it, they're having team fights over blue buff. It's such an important thing and that's why we're seeing uh, Dyrus warding that enemy blue buff right there is because TSM wants to invade as soon as it comes up or possibly just steal it with smite. We'll see what happens there. As you said, it is going to be up in just a few more minutes. Right now, is Dragon, do you think, a possibility for either of the teams or do they have to get a kill either mid or bot? Um, it really depends. Um, if they don't have to get kills, but if they get low enough, if one side's able, like, let's say Nocturne, um, Ash, and Tara go in for the Initiate, they're trying to get the kills bottom, and they, they don't get the kills, but they still, have, they still have enough HP that they're able to go back, and TSM has to go back, that is when you're going to go to Dragon. When you can push people out of lane so they can't contest, that is when you're going to go do that Dragon. I think we need, uh, let me turn Colorblind on real fast, just for... Our, our, Turning our colorblind old up. handicap uh, colorblind friends out there. Co colorblind friends, that's right, that's right. Maokai, it looks like he's coming up top for potentially a tower dive on this Riven. She is about half health. She does have a pot going right now, but she has none left in her bag. So this could be a really mm -hmm. good tower dive yep. here. Young Buck is sick, so he will be able to ultimate, which gives him a lot more shield, a lot more damage, and an execute. But will he be able to bring either of them, though? There's a twisted advance. The uh, slicing Maelstrom does come out, and the Maokai ultimate mitigates a lot of damage. And Young Buck goes down very, very quickly. Dyrus is going to get out of there with still a lot of health left. Yep. That's definitely... Uh a really good play by TSM, forcing him into tower when he's already low, coming around the back like that. Um, as I noticed, they didn't have that warded, so he had no idea that was coming in. And that's just that's just going to happen. That's just a, nice, a solid play by TSM. That's great teamwork right there. And St. Fish is getting initiated on your middle. Uh, unfortunately, the original can't keep the binding on him, and it's going to have to get away. I'm kind of confused. Uh, Ottawa looked like he just kind of walked past that tower dive there. He didn't actually yeah. uh, get, in, get in the fight at all, because that definitely would have been a dead Karthus. Yep, but right. oh well, now it looks like TSM is going to get this dragon here. And that's exactly what we're talking about. We didn't get the kill middle, but that's enough to push at least an advantage to have a 4 versus 3 now, where TSM can hopefully take this uncontested. But they are coming around, they're all trying to group up, but they do have Reginald coming off the back here. Nocturne initiating in, and uh, Carthage Ultimate is going out. Ottoman's going to go down. Uh, X Special barely living, and Nocturne's flashing over, and actually Chaos going down at the same time, and Dyrus over here. Young Buck doing tons of damage to him. Will he be able to finish off Dyrus? The stun is going to go out. That is a, he's going to electric shield away, and they are going to probably go back in. they got some go uh, stuff going on here bottom. Reginald's going to initiate it on. Will he be able to get that stuff going on? He's got the black shield out. The binding is going to go out. They're, they can't get the tether out. He might be able to get away. Slaper's got such low HP. I'm not sure if he can follow. And Reginald is going to be able to back up for that. But that is a 3-0 exchange. Possibly pick up Dragon here too. Depending on what they're going to do. TSM, Reginald is sticking around. He might be able to pick this up. But they are pulling it out. So there's a very low chance he's going to be able to pick it up. And that's going to be the dragon for him. And Slepper going to go. Oh, popping the heel though. Reginald can't get that dazzle off because he does have the black shield up. Young Buck blowing his ultimate. He's going to chase him down. Reginald flashing over. The ultimate barely hitting him. Reginald making a great play. Flashing over the side. Making them blow some stuff. And that's some great team fighting action we got going on right here. Man, I thought for sure right there. Uh, Reggie was just caught in no man's land. He was in the enemy jungle. <laughs> he was he was caught between the whole entire enemy team and Dragon. He thought maybe he could make a play at Dragon, but actually that you know pushing Saint out of lane in mid, having to blow his ultimate on just that one target, kind of changed the entire dynamic of his his position in that entire fight. If he had had his ultimate right there, he could have easily flashed into Dragon, black shield, and probably picked up a few kills right there mm -hmm. and maybe stolen Dragon. But without that ultimate up. There was nothing he could do except just kind of uh, delay it a little bit. Again, it was to no avail. That is a dragon for Curse EU. Yep. Now the farm over everywhere, just looking at that, 79 CS for Ash to Graves 92. So Graves has decided to pull out. And uh, before we saw a little bit of a disadvantage for, for Graves, but he is definitely making it work for him now. He's got the double Doran's Blade, Vamp Scepter, Zerker's Greaves. 
while Ash has decided to go the pickaxe vamp scepter right now. Uh, you know, what is what is the mindset right now? Like, do you why why do people go Doran's blades over get a straight BF sword or a straight pickaxe? Is it just how you feel about your lane matchup or what? Um, well, generally it's because I mean, if you have tons of gold and you can just buy one flat out, some it's some situations is good. Um, but the Doran's is going to give you that little bit of uh, survivability. You got the life steal and you've got the HP. And it's going to give you that little bit of damage. It's mostly about laning phase uh, situations because you're going to have the HP to survive. You're going to have the HP to trade. And without those items, you're really going to be low. Um, but we do have a little bit of action going on here. Top Young Buck and Odd One are going to be trading back and forth. Uh, not much going to go back off. Young Buck's going to back off. And it seems like they're just going to be trying to push that tower. Um, trying to do, Just trying to push Young Buck away a little bit here. And they're probably going to take this tower. They're going to clear this wave, waiting for the other wave to come in. Um, we do see. Uh, uh, Malnu here bottom trying to get the gank off bottom here this is what we talked about we got this upcoming gank um, it's not warded so we can see the initiate here coming from Ash or Tarek um, just waiting for this to go out and now we crystal wait. Arrow. Let's see so what patiently. happens. There it is. There's a uh, Dazzle going out and the arrow combo on a special. There's a Karthus ultimate going out at the same time. And that's exactly what we were talking about earlier. That is some great play. Slipper is flashing over. He doesn't get, uh, does get the frost shot off. Does get the volley off. Creeps are kind of blocking him though. He's going to shoot out the, uh, the bird to see it into the bush. But he is going to be able to get away. Yeah, and he's going to have to pull off that one. He did blow his flash a little bit early and didn't quite get as much CC off as he wanted on that Graves. The Graves, Graves quick draw is perfect for, for offensive and defensive. You know, it covers, a, it covers just enough distance to usually get away from, uh, from most things right there. In the meantime, Morgana and... Oh, we paused it. Something, something must have Something's gone wrong. Oh, it's special disconnected. That's not good. Yeah, guys, uh, for some reason... Um my computer is like a second in the future. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It's one second in the future. I'm trying to uh, compensate for this. So. Uh, I know. Like I would love. I would love to cast a team fight or something. But like you get to jump on it before me. Yeah, so I was, it's I like, was, oh I was like, I thought we were gonna go back and forth here, but uh, I always like. I was like, okay, well, this makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> that is what happens, and it, 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 it's just how it is, you know. It'll be okay. We'll get over it. Yeah. I forgive you. <laughs> Maybe next game we can actually get our computers completely in sync. But uh, while this pause is going on, I will mention that on twitch.tv slash picomouse, which is P-I-C-O-M-A-U-S-E, you can see the stream of the, uh, the TSM room. So you can see where they're playing. You can see a stream of those players uh, s huddled over their computer playing for $10,000. I mean, that's, that's a good stream. And don't leave this stream by any means. Just open both. Just, Just open, open both, both streams. Open. It's cool. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We do have cameras set up, and tomorrow we'll have the players out kind of in a more open area. We'll have cameras set up. We'll be able to go to different views and stuff like that. So right now it's kind of just the game or us or what have you, or we're not going to have that. <laughs> apparently tomorrow got changed, and we didn't hear about it. We're the last <laughs> people to hear about it. Or apparently I'm the last person to hear about it. I don't quite know. But uh, as soon as this is done, as soon as we can get a special back in the game, this is clearly one of the most advantageous things about the tournament realm, being able to pause. You know, we are on a LAN, so it's kind of weird that he would be disconnected, but maybe he kicked his computer and it turned off. Something like that. We, we've got yeah. someone in there checking it out right now. So uh, in the meantime, we're here. We How are. do you feel about this game so far? Um, it's, well, let's just take a look at the gold real quick. I mean, it's really only a 600 gold difference. That's really nothing. Mm -hmm. Like That's truly anybody's game. And only one kill. One kill up for Curse. Um, Curse EU. That'll be fun to say. All right. So we do have an update for you guys. Um, Especials, a client crash. It wasn't the computer. It was a law client, which does happen, as we all know, um, with, uh, with the client sometimes. But he is back in. Uh, we're probably going to see unpause here really soon. And, yeah. He is back in the game, so I'm sure we'll see it in just a second. Okay. Any moment now. <laughs> Any moment. I, I completely forgot we were on the tournament realm for a second, and when I saw the pause, oh, like black go. and white, I was like, what? what is oh, okay, we're on the tournament realm. Okay, perfect. There we go. All right, Resuming we were the game. back in this thing. So uh, the farm, Karthus, 101. Morgana has 101. They're exactly even on that farm. That's very impressive. So Saint doing a great job of keeping up with, Mor uh, with uh, Reggie's Morgana play right there, as, as you see. Reggie using his Tormented Soil to keep St. Vicious from backing. St. Vicious is at low mana, and that's exactly where Reggie wants him to be. He's going to keep him in his lane as long as possible and press that advantage that he has right there. And Reggie doing the classic, take these wraiths uh, to pad his CS just a little bit more. 
Dazzle does come out on bottom of the Graves, followed by the Shatter Volley, an ultimate combo from Tarek, which does a whole lot of damage and yeah, reduces the armor by a, a, by a whole heck of a lot. Um, but Graves is going to be okay. He's going to walk away from that battle just about fine. Now, there you go. Blue buff being donated right now to St. Vicious, so he's going to be able to go back to lane and be okay. He does have a Catalyst and an Amplifying Tome. Are we going to just see a, a Rod of Ages build there, you think? Um, yeah, most likely. I mean, most likely. Most likely, I mean, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, Car it's just great for his base HP, base mana, and gives, gives a solid chunk of a AP at the same time. So it's really a great item for Karthus because Karthus is one of those champions who has to get into the middle of a fight. He, he's someone who gets in the mix of things because to use his his AoE damage, because he's really just all about being around and he has to be in the middle of it. So Rod of Ages is like a perfect fit for him. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like Reggie's being aggressive here. He does get the Soul Shackles out, but it's countered by St. Vicious Flash, and he's going to be okay. Odd one really wanted to follow up on that, but, uh, you know, taking a, taking a Flash out of the way of St. Vicious, the uh, TSM will take that any day, you know. Now it just it means that Odd one can go amongst, uh, go on his merry way, keep farming the jungle, gank other lanes, and know that he can come back in the next two to three minutes and gank St. and just, you know, get a kill there, pretty much. Yep. No chance for him. Some pings going out bot from Curse EU. But I don't think, it looks like Muluno is just telling them that he is coming bot and there's going to be another, exactly what you said. Enchanted Crystal Arrow, Paranoia, Dazzle, Karthus Ult, kill down there because Karthus Ult is about to come back up. Yeah, definitely, definitely. They have a super hyper carry with a Riven Top and then they have this great four-man ganks that can just spam bottom all game long. Will the Riven, oh, there's the Enchanted Crystal Arrow but out onto Graves, followed up by the Paranoia. There's a Dazzle. That is a long time to be CC'd. Chaos may get out of this. The Exhaust, Soraka trying to keep his buddy up alive as long as possible, and oh Chaos e oh, goes man. down to oh. the red buff. That was a true damage red buff tick right there, oh, and Karthus dope. Ultimate is going to clean that up as well. Here comes Odd one to try to defend the turret just a little bit, but it may be too little too late, or they may go for a tower dive here. There's the Fear Tether, his ultimate... Mitigating a lot of damage, but he's going to go down as well. And I think Curse EU is going to be able to take this tower down as well. Not very good for TSM oh, right there. We do have Dyrus flowing his ultimate top. He's going to get that tower. He's going to push him away. There's nothing he could do about that. So they have to push the Riven back in top. Um, so that is a 3-0 and exchange again. But they did manage to take up that tower. But we do see CRS EU pushing down bot lane relentlessly. Possibly going to take us another tower. They are going to back off. Actually, they might keep going. When Morgana is transitioning over here, this is going to be a three-on-three -three situation, but no ults on the side of Curse EU. There's Ooh, Reggie. He does get the Soul Shackles. He's waiting on his Dark Binding. Who does he decide to hit with it? He does a Tormented Soil down, but he still has a Dark Binding up, and he doesn't bind anyone, but it looks like he's going to try to cut off Slepper in this bottom river. Let's see if he can hit him. There's some creeps there to try to block it, but now Slepper is all alone, and there is a ward in that brush for TSM, but not this second brush. Is he going to get a blind Dark Binding off? He tries to get a point-blank one, and he misses it. Slepper just kind of runs in circles around Reggie and dodges that point blank dark binding but then again dragon does come up and this is going to be I think a TSM dragon I don't think there's anything Cursey you can do about it no they're too spread out right now they just they basically this is a classic bite off more than you can chew uh, they should have known dragons coming up they should know all this is happening so pushing in bottom like that pushing in so hard that you know the next wave that you know your target gets caught by your face checking it's all because you just spent too much time trying to take objectives and not realizing what's going to come up and what you can take and that's just a little miscommunication within the team and that happens a lot I mean that's honestly what you'll see what a lot of teams do they'll try to bite off more than they can chew and then you get punished for it and that's going to give TSM the ability to come back by picking up a dragon and a kill so right now it is 7 to 4 in the advantage of Curse EU as far as kills are concerned still only like a uh, a thousand gold advantage right now for Curse EU. It looks like TSM does take down this middle tower. The uh, the ultimate from Maokai just throwing down for good measure. To now the the Maokai ultimate against the defile from uh, the the AOE damage that you're going to see from Curse EU's team. Uh, do you think that's going to be the big thing when it comes to a five on five team fight? Mm, I honestly, I, I or do you think it's just not enough to matter? I, I'd actually have to give the team fights to. Um CRSEU, um, I really like that they have the ability to dive so hard and they have the ability to choose when to initiate. Granted, they do have, if Reggie's getting some great black shields off, that's going to stop that initiate, but I'm, I'm just going to have to give it to them. I just, I like their team comp a lot better um, for team fights. 
Yes, indeed. Now, we talked about Riven and Kinnon up top earlier. Now, the biggest thing I can see right there is that Riven has 76 CS to 150 CS right now in Dyer's. He has picked up a needlessly large rod and a chain vest, so obviously going to be rushing Azania's ring there to mitigate some of the damage that, uh, that happens whenever he gets in there with the slicing Maelstrom because he's going to be a, a big target of focus, of course. Yeah. Um, between that, the Soul Shackles, the Maokai uh, Ultimate, both teams have a lot of AoE. Yeah. But as you said, I think you give the advantage to Cursey. You think when it comes uh, just, to big just fights? Just if it was just like a 5-on-5, five five, but in this situation with... Oh, actually, no, we do have the initiation going on here bottom. Auburn going to take that stuff. The ultimate is going out. Reggie's going to flash in, try to get the Soul Shackles off. Then we have uh, blowing up the Twisted Advance on Tarak there. Going in, Todd one is going to go down. Original taking a lot of damage. Chaos taking a lot of damage as well. Will they be able to pick up these? St. Vicious is going to pick it up. Tarak's still chasing, and then that last play waste is going to take it in. And we do have still here, the two, uh, still managing to fight. I'm still wondering if they're going to go. Cannon Ultimate is going out. They're going to blow it, hitting St. Vicious, hitting Zenic. Will they have enough to go down? Dyrus is pretty fed right now, and he's going to be able to take it. Zani is going out. Will he be able to launch that? And he's not going to be able to. And the Soraka oh, heal actually wow. saves Dyrus. Amazing play by X Special there. He's going to be able to save Dyrus. That was amazing. Oh that was my a gosh. long range heal over the wall. That I can't huge. even believe he was in range. That was for amazing. That. that was some pro support right there. Props to X Special. And that's from one support player to another. So that's, <laughs> that's the truest of, of props right there. Young Buck, in the meantime, is going to put out a lot of damage on this tower. I think he's going to have enough time to take it down. So that is going to be one tower down from TSM. But that was, a, that was a, great, a great team fight right there. The entire time I was thinking, St. Vicious held on to his ultimate for a long he time. Did. He was he just really waiting did. to go down and die. Yeah. But at the same time, he was picking up so many kills, he didn't really need to use it. You know, uh, I, thought the, I wasn't sure if the ultimate was going to hit after the Zanya's Hourglass or during it, but it, it came out perfectly, but the heal came out more perfectly, essentially. Mm -hmm. Young Buck up top in a two-on-one situation against Kennen and Maokai. Looks like he's going to use his Broken Wings to put a lot of distance between him and those two pursuers, but I think he is still going to go down. Odwin throws a war down in that brush so they can get vision of him, and yes, that is going to be Young Buck going down in a two-on-one situation. Now, Blue Buff looks like this is going to be a big, uh, a big confrontation here again. Zenic does get Dark Binding and Soul Shackles just for good measure, but he may not go down here. The Enchanted Crystal Arrow does get blocked by the Black Shield. The Wall of Pain put down, separating Dyrus and Reggie from the odd one, Ooh. but Saint goes down so quickly to the damage of Dyrus and Reginald, and that is a sad, sad Saint right there. He has no ultimate really to follow up with either because he, he used it last fight. We already see the twist of advance here going on to Malanu. Oddman is going to initiate that. It is two versus one. The target's going to blow that ultimate. Uh, Snare is going to go off. I wonder if Oddman going to go down. He's going to keep going, though. Special is going to blow his ultimate, trying to save it in. The Reginald's going in. The twist of advance keeps going in. Oddman still diving. We'll be able to drop. And he's barely going to make it out. Oh, my gosh. Oh, never mind. Oh, the Dustbringer from the downtown. The Dustbringer picks it up. And here comes oh Young Buck in trying to, he does have that range execute, so this could be his perfect situation right here. Oh. But he misses, he only hits Soraka. He doesn't hit the two low health targets, so he may pay for his transgressions right here, but the Valor does put a little distance between him and the enemy team. Oh, man. That was not. Unfortunate, not that great. Zanya's and the unfortunate miss really um, stopped them from picking up those kills that they really needed there. Yeah, and uh, Chaos, hey, in the meantime, you guys are having those team fights up there and kind of winning without me. I'm going to take down a turret town bot. How do you feel about that? That's good. I mean, if they really don't, if you don't need someone to have a fight, that's the absolute best thing to do is just continue to push. If that's, that's really a judgment call that probably Reggie made was saying, mm -hmm. hey, stay down there, don't come up. I'm going to keep pushing bottom. You guys do the team fight, and that's just the way it's going to happen. Exactly. I mean, he knew he couldn't cover that much distance to go from bot all the way to the enemy blue buff. So, you know, like you said, just, just stay bot. Just, just do your thing down there. And now it looks like Maluno is going to pick up this red buff. He does have a phage, a heart of gold, and a recurve bow. Is that, is that the buildings of a wit's end on Nocturne? Is usually a pretty standard thing, huh? Um, yeah, for the most part. Oh, you Wit think it's unorthodox? Wit's end, no. Wit's end is pretty much common in almost all junglers. It gives them that, uh, especially like you see the champions like Shivana and stuff like that. Um, it gives them a great amount of attack speed. It gives them the MR to dive those AP carries when they really need to get in there. Um, it's just a great overall item. Which is going to be very important because the fed people that you do have on TSM is Morgana at 3-1-3 and three, mm -hmm. and Kennen who is 4-0-3. Well, four, they do zero and three. have a double caster comp there, if you notice that. Mm -hmm. And they have Soraka for, for more MR shredding. So it's really, I mean, Graves is their AD damage and then you have four guys who are just mm -hmm. going to be dishing out that AP damage. So Wits End is definitely a good pickup. No Will of the Ancients from either player right now. Uh, I don't really think you see Will of the Ancients too much on Morgana because she does have that built-in yeah. passive mm -hmm. spell vamp. But, you know, when you're running a double AP... 
it's kind of just like, why the heck not? We may as well <laughs> just both build it. We both benefit from it. Now, it looks like both teams are aware that Dragon has just popped some great ward coverage from Absolute Legends. They have wards everywhere right now. But then again, so does TSM. But TSM has decided to be the aggressor. They are sitting in the Dragon Pit right now, waiting for Curse to make a move. This is kind of the standoff right here. Who's going to make the first move? The Enchanted Crystal Arrow does land onto Reggie, but he does have the Black Shield. It, he does not go down there. The Soul Shackles is going to land on a one target. St. Vicious, after he burns his flash, he gets stunned. But he's surviving for a long time and barely misses the Dark Binding there. Dyrus does take St. Vicious down, but the Requiem comes out and oh. rains down hell. But Dyrus has that Armor of Magic resist from his Lightning Rush and he barely, barely survives. Oh, Young Bucks. Reggie Impressive. is here. Oh, there's the oh Dark Binding. Gosh. This is, that was, uh, I, I thought that was going really, really well for Curse oh, he EU. Could turn, he could turn in. Oh, the Zhonyas. The he Zonyas still had it the whole time. That. Oh my gosh. And another Zhonyas. <laughs> stopping these <laughs> the auto attacks. TSM with the Zhonyas plate. Oh my gosh. That was beautiful. Holy. Now, <laughs> now neither team being able to uh, being able to take dragon Stopping right there, but still a great great team fight. And you just gave you gave Dyrus two more kills. Reggie picked up one more assist. You know, uh, still Nocturne five one and seven. Been uh, a, a big a big factor in this game. You know, he does he has seven assists because his fear tether is so paramount when it comes to a team fight. It's oh a great gosh. source of CC. Uh, four two and eight on it's Slepper right now. It's still so close. It and is game is so fourteen to thirteen, still. about a two thousand gold difference, it's and we're we're at twenty five minutes. Usually, you see one team or the other kind of snowballing at this point, but yeah, neither but team. Nobody's really taking a clear advantage. I mean, the only thing that's giving people advantages, I'd say, those Zanyas, those Zanyas <laughs> plays are fantastic. I, I I I didn't know that they held it on onto that for so long. Good thing they did, obviously. Yeah, you, you know? usually see uh, a Ken and a Morgana when they initiate with those ultimates is when they, when they blow those uh, Zanyas to get you know not take damage when they're stuck in burning those ultimates. Um, but they managed to save them, and that was absolutely beautiful. You, you noticed what they did there, and it stopped the Ash from getting the auto attacks to clean up both kills. They both timed it separately so Ash wouldn't get either kill, and they could support themselves and get away. And that is true teamwork. Yeah, that was. Those are phenomenal plays. You know, Reggie started that fight by flashing and soul shackling. Mm -hmm. I thought that was going to be a Zanyas for sure. Yep. But no, for some reason he was able to get out of that situation without having to burn his Zanyas. Yep. Uh, Cursey, you. Whenever Reggie does that, whenever he does that flash ultimate uh, initiation, they need to make him pay for it. Like that's yeah. the most important thing. They they need to at least make him pay for it with his life, or burn his Zanyas. You know, yeah. that's too important of an item to hold on to the entirety of a team fight and have it save you at the very end. Yeah. You know. It needs to be. It needs well, to be at the beginning. That's the second time it saved Dyrus. Dyrus, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I, I sometimes I forget about my active items in my inventory, <laughs> and that's probably why I'm a scrub. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> well, yeah. It's the worst thing when you buy an active item and then you realize the next team fight that you had it. You're like, oh man, I forgot I bought that. It item. happens more often than not for me with Quicksilver Sash. I, I always forget <laughs> I have Quicksilver Sash. Yeah, Quicksilver Sash is definitely. Uh, oh, here we go. They are going to hide there, but Cannon is going to blow their cover. Youngbuck running into the entire enemy team, getting dark binded right there. And here's a Dyrus Flash ultimate. He does burn his Zanyas early in the fight, so that is important to note right there. Here comes Reggie in with the follow-up Soul Shackles. He does still have his Zanyas. There's his Zanyas as well, and he's able to take down St. Fishes very, very quickly with that. The Twisted Advance onto Slepper. He will go down as well. Here's Requiem putting out so much damage. Maluno is able to pick up Morgana at the very tail end of that fight there. But that is going to be three for one exchange in the favor of TSM. So right now we're seeing the 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 scales shift a little bit in the TSM's favor, you know? A little this bit, is, yeah. This is looking pretty good for them, but it looks like Xenek and uh, and Youngbuck want to try to get them away for Baron. They don't have a, a quick Baron damage uh, right here. Well, they don't have a, a Karthus or a Cassiopeia or anything. No. They are managing to take it down, though. Um, what, what CRSU is lacking at the moment is really that bruiser DPS from, from Youngbuck. Um, he did get camped a little bit early. He did have an unfortunate lane where he didn't have a positive matchup. Um, so he did unfortunately fall behind, and that's really what Cursey U's uh, big problem is right now, is they don't have a crazy bruiser that's going and mess their world up, because they have this cannon, they have this Morgana, which is being so offensive, flashing into teams, you know, not even blowing Zhonyas, you know, they're not even getting punished for it. Um, and we really need someone on uh, CRS EU to punish them, and they just don't have that right now. So TSM is just moving forward and forward and forward because they just don't have an answer for it. It's all about the Black Shield. It, Black that, shield. That's what it's been, you know. Black Shield Zanyas. That big team fight at Dragon, she she didn't have to blow Zanyas because she had Black Shield. The Enchanted yeah. Crystal Arrow was was mitigated because of the Black Shield. Wasn't a Dazzle mitigated? As I well? think a Dazzle may have been as well. Yeah, because the Enchanted Crystal Arrow didn't break do enough damage to break it. Ooh. Now it looks like Young Buck may pay for his positioning here. He does get Dark Binding, and the Ignite will bring him down. Oh, no, Valor may oh, save nice. him. It does indeed. So Reggie burning his Ignite and Flash there to try to pick up a kill that he doesn't even get. That's kind of sad. Oh, 
Oh, never mind. Black Shield. Black Shield. Black Shield. No big deal. Don't worry, guys. There's not, the team fight wasn't happening with Black Shield. <laughs> such such a good ability. Don't initiate? Right Black Shield. Black Shield. Oh, we'll initiate? Black Shield. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think you think you want to initiate? No. Black Shield. We'll be Black good. Shield. We'll be good. It's so it's such a it, like you don't really think of it as an offensive skill, you know, but no, it kind it of really is, is because you put it on yourself. That person has free range in the enemy team. They're not going to get CC. They have to burst through it before they exactly. do anything. And I don't think that uh, the AL has the, the magic damage to burst through it. You know, they if they get a good lay waste off and some defile time, but other than that, they don't have any magic damage to burn through a black shield really, really quickly. So it's gonna it's really going to do away with a lot of the CC that they have. The key burst, the dazzle, the enchanted crystal arrow, the fear, everything. And that's not what Curse EU wants right now. Morgana was... Um, was a great pickup by Reginald here oh, in this game. Saint taking the finding and he's gonna get dropped at tower. Oh my gosh, comboed with Chaos right there, busting his ultimate and his buckshot on him. That was just too much for him to take. That is sad. He he he's just he's squishy right now. That's <laughs> all there is. Karthus is always gonna be a little squishy. Yeah, exactly. Talking about that rod of ages giving you that little bit of boost, but uh, generally Karthus is supposed to die in a team fight. He's just supposed to go in, go man mode, just. Go, 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 go. Um, but when you get caught like that, um, you know, kind of outside tower range, you're going to get dropped by, by anybody who's a smart team. Most definitely. He has, he's got a, a semi-glass cannon, I would say. He's got the Rabadon's Death Cap and the Rod of Ages to give him some beefiness. But right now, Reggie is just asserting his dominance. Deep. He's 6 and 2 right now. He has the Zanyas. He's got the workings of a Death Cap. I believe he probably, he has plenty of gold. He can go back and buy a Death Cap anytime he wants, which yeah. is so scary. I mean, they really have nothing to fear right now. Nope. Um, and they have they Baron have as well. They have, no, they have no wave clear. Um, volley, oh, here we go. Oh, well, there's the initiate from Ottawa onto Young Buck. The Soul Shackles will hit on him. The Broken Wings gets him just out of range, but the Dark Binding will follow up there. Dyrus does take down Young Buck, but Dyrus may pay for it as well. He gets very, very low, gets to about 100 health. In the meantime, St. Vicious is trying to do work for his team, but not able to defend that inhibitor. And the collateral damage at max range does take St. Vicious down. That's an inhibitor. TSM looking really, really good right now. Up four kills, up 7k gold. You know, it's got interesting to think that. Yeah, got the Baron. It's interesting to see that six minutes ago we were talking about how absolutely even this game was. It you was. Know? It truly was. It just shows Twisted one team fight. Here, but we do have the Nocturne ultimate going back in. We do have KX uh, flashing in there, trying to do that damage. They are going to drop Malanu too. That is going to be a 2 and 0 exchange. Um, on Again, unfortunate for CRS, but they sh really shouldn't have been stepping out of base like that. That was kind of a silly move, in my opinion. And TSM just turned around and say, hey, we're up. We got five. We know we're, we can beat you. And, and that was just it right there. It was a, it was a, uh, a ballsy, I think, attempt a from Curse EU. But, you know, what could you do? You're, they're, they're, they're starting to lose their grip. They're starting to fall behind just a little bit. TSM is starting Sometimes to snowball just a little bit. Sometimes you got to make those plays bit. to come back. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, it was made, you know, a few patches ago, how how you get more XP from higher level champions and stuff yep. like that. So mm -hmm. there's there's the room for a comeback, you know, yep. if it does come down to it. But, uh, you know, giving up two kills for nothing when the enemy team just took an inhibitor and has Baron, yep. it's it's not how you get back in the game. No. You know? <laughs> it's not how you do no. it at all. And a dragon. They're going to pick up another dragon here. Completely uncontested. Right now, Curse EU is just relegated to their own base. They can't really leave it. They have the in their own inhibitor down. It kind of stinks for them at this point in time. What do you think TSM's move here? Do you think they just pressure another lane, let top push, mm -hmm. and then just kind of start rolling from there? Well, when you take an inhibitor, it, all lanes start to push here. But we do have an initiate going on your bottom here. Nocturne's most likely going to die. He's going to have to run for his life. Um, the entire TSM team is going to chase after Malamu. He is going to try to get away, though. He's blowing that, uh, the spell shield. Um, this really, he might be able to get caught here by... Oh, just oh. missing. The binding just misses Malanu. He might have to blow his ult here, though. I don't think Reggie wants to. He wants to keep for the team fight. Twisted Vance going out, and they are going to drop down Malanu. Yeah, and this is this is where they, they're just going to push in bot lane, uh, win a 4v5 team fight, and that might be curtains for Curse EU in this game one it of, might, uh, um, of this best of three. As we talked about, the top inhibitor has uh, already been pushed, and with that chase, they do have this huge wave coming in top, so they're going to have to defend their base turrets and the bottom at the same time, and they're down one here. Malanu did get dropped, so this is going to be definitely really hard. St. Vicious is getting caught again. Oh my god, there's the initiate. There's so much damage blowing out. Instantly it goes down. Youngblood blowing down. The ultimate's going out. Curse of you has just exploded. That's just what happened. That was quick. Too much damage. Too much AoE damage. That's that was nice. fantastic initiation by TSM. That is going to drop down to CRS EU, and that is most likely going to be the game right now. They're going to finish these base turrets, and that will be the end of game one. 
Uh, there wasn't really a, a way to, to shout cast that no. little thing because St. Vicious died no. really quickly. It was instant. It was just like, initiation, dead. everyone's dead. <laughs> initiation dead. That initiation was dead. <laughs> so that is game one right there of TSM versus Curse EU. Uh, I guess formerly Absolute Legends EU. Now team that, formerly uh, known as Absolute Legends EU. <laughs> exactly. Now uh, we're going to get quickly into the second game right now in this best of three.